to the 2016 commencement service. We're gathered here to see our seniors off, having completed their long journey to graduating from Blair. Beginning this morning, allow me to open with a brief word of prayer. God of many names, we are thankful for this time, the opportunity to gather together and recognize the graduation of the class of 2016. They've done good work, and each have contributed to our community impressions both immense and nuanced, helping to shape Blair into the school it is today. As we prepare for them to receive their diplomas this morning, let us remember the great network of support that has seen these students through to this very moment. Parents, siblings, friends, teachers, administrators. It is this network, this community, that makes possible not just our time here together, but makes this ceremony the special, momentous one it is. Amen. Good morning. Welcome, friends, family, staff, class of 2016. I'm delighted to welcome you on this glorious, even if a bit hot day, to the 168th commencement exercises of Blair Academy, honoring the achievements of our wonderful class of 2016. For those graduates wondering why you, unlike our faculty, do not have the privilege of wearing long, heavy, heat-retaining black robes at graduation, my response is, you're welcome. Before we proceed, I address all who have worked, sacrificed, worried, rejoiced, and all things in between to help each of our graduates arrive at this day. We thank you. This day and your achievements have truly been the work of a village that extends far beyond this hilltop. I would also like to take a moment to recognize those on this stage, Associate Head of School, Ryan Pagato, Assistant Head of School and Dean of Faculty, Rachel Stone, for whom this will be her last Blair graduation as she leaves us to become the Head of School at Canterbury. I recognize uh, Nathan Molteni, Dean of Academics, and Mr. Pell, our Chaplain. In our audience today, I also welcome with appreciation members of our Blair Board of Trustees, Neil and Virginia Sigety, parents to Ned graduating today. Rob Sigety, father of Katie, who is also a member of the class of 2016. Neil, Virginia, and Rob, good news is that we'll be seeing you again, and again, and again, and again, as Sigety's graduate from Blair for many years to come. We are also joined by trustees Jim Jenkins, Hobie Van Dusen, David Harvey, Robin Scheman, Alex Sloan and Maria Sabatier. We thank you for being here today. The accomplishments of the class of 2016 are many and they're impressive and they have distinguished themselves not only by what they have done, but more importantly by the exceptional young men and women that they have become. And in that regard, I could think of no two better representatives of this class to open today's ceremony than our welcome speakers and members of the senior class council, Kyle Maljan and Eleni Kedros. Trustees, faculty, friends, parents, and the class of 2016. Now even after the countless time management skills I have learned here at Blair, I still ended up writing this speech last night after baccalaureate at 10 p.m. Even though I did write this last minute, don't think I didn't put in any effort. I took a lot of time this past week to ignore the constant reminders to write this speech. Finally, however, the deadline caught up to me. So I sat down at my desk in my hot room after baccalaureate with a sharpened yellow number two pencil in my hand and opened up my computer and started to type. <laughs> Writing this speech hours before I had to deliver it may seem like procrastination at its worst, but I've done even worse. In fact, I started one task four years ago and have still not finished it. Freshman year, I downloaded an app on my phone called Tamago. The purpose of this app is to tap an egg one million times until it cracks. And I've been working on this for four years straight throughout my time here at Blair. The more I've grown, the more I have tapped. 
But of course, I did not make this journey alone. Many of you have helped me. You helped me grow and helped me tap. There are now 10 taps left, and I thought it'd be only fitting to crack it right here and right now. So here it goes. That's 10 for our classmates. Nine for our teachers. Seven, eight? <laughs> for our teammates. Seven for the experiences, memories, and moments that have taught us so much. Six for the parents who have helped us through this journey every step of the way. Five for the weird way Mr. Pregato claps. <laughs> Four, for when Will Pemberton wore prescriptionless glasses and quoted himself on Facebook freshman year. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Two, for Aiden Shu. And one, for all of us. If you want to know what it says, it says, so what? <laughs> after a million taps, but that's not important. Because <laughs> after four years, this egg has been cracked. And while I finally delete this app off my phone, and we all leave this wonderful place, we bring with us the lessons, the experiences, the memories, and the subconscious finger twitching from tapping an egg one million times. Thank you and welcome to our commencement service. here today in an attempt not to put you all to sleep because who would have thought that I would have met a deadline or graduated high school? When hearing that I had to write this speech, I panicked and googled how to write a good graduation speech, but Google was less than impressive so I did it myself. When when, welcome to our families, friends, trustees, and faculty to this monumentous day celebrating the end of an era. A day that marks the beginning of adulthood, but also the end of our Mr. Pregado filled mornings, the end of sign-in, formal dinner, people that have time to care, and the people that don't, but still do. It's been a good time. You know, it really has been. It's been a love-hate relationship, but like most good things, it would be too boring if it was just love or just hate. It's nice to have some variety, you know, to keep things spicy. I don't mean to address those of you who don't feel burdened by this day. But I feel like Blair has impacted all of our lives in a special way. It has prepared us for the next chapter in ways we can't even recognize now. So it's like when your mom used to say, you will thank me later, and you thought to yourself, okay, right. <laughs> One day, we will fully appreciate all that Blair has done for us. But also to those of you who are immensely impacted by the sadness that today brings, don't be. Because you should know that even though I find it funny that we have kind of been spoiled here with the clean bathrooms, the working internet, and the people that care, we have grown up in ways that have prepared us so we are fully equipped to take advantage of this next opportunity. I realize that friendships here are one of a kind. I say this because how many times can you and your friend bond over walking to formal dinner with frozen hair, foraging for food at midnight? or the exhibitions that you went into not knowing if you were going to come out alive because you knew that Justin and Sanjay would see straight through your thesaurus-inspired hatchet job. But seriously, the friends we made here are special because we have grown up together. We know each other better than we know ourselves. And we all care about each other immensely. We don't know really what's going to happen after we go off to college, but you never know. You could meet the love of your life, a hippie, earthy, free-spirited soulmate, and realize that your true passion is to drop out of college and go live in the woods. I'm not saying that I suggest this because showering is important, but it's important that we don't lose sight of our passions in the competitive society. Katie Ix, if this happens to you, call me and I'll come and save you. <laughs> I would also like to take a moment to thank the people who work endlessly behind the scenes because without you, we would not be here. Thank you to our families who have put up with us through it all and given us this wonderful opportunity. Thank you to the faculty that have helped us grow up in ways you can't even imagine. It is through their continuous comfort, humility, and passion that we are able to cross the finish line today. And finally, to our class, I would like to thank you for being a high maintenance bunch because very eager to succeed and all of you in ways you can't imagine have made my time here incredible. Lastly, I would like to offer my views on goodbyes. Personally, I hate them, so this is not goodbye. Maybe some of you out there supporting us today remember what goodbye was like when technology didn't exist. 
But luckily, we have Snapchat. And for those, for those of you who live in the dark ages and don't know what it is, we'll be able to communicate. So let us celebrate all the memories that have brought us to this day. Congratulations, and welcome to the class of 2016 commencement. present four awards to the faculty at these commencement exercises. The APGAR Teaching Award, the Retha Residential Life Award, the Vogel Teaching Award, and the Ted Lowe Grant. First, the APGAR Teaching Award. This award is given by Mr. and Mrs. Malin APGAR to honor excellence in teaching among the younger faculty ranks. A graduate of Blair, Dartmouth, and Oxford University, Sandy Apgar has endowed this award at all three schools because he believes that promoting excellence in classroom teaching is the greatest gift a school can receive. Moreover, he understands that at Blair, we can hardly confine the excellence of our young faculty to the classroom, for they are actively engaged in teaching all over the campus throughout the day. At the heart of this award lies a commitment to building and sustaining a classroom culture founded upon student engagement. As teachers, we have this as a common goal, an approach we work on daily, weekly, and yearly. Today's APGAR Award recipient is well on his way toward finding that sweet spot in the classroom where students drive discussion and the teacher understands each student individually within the broader context of the class as a team. His department head has highlighted the energy this colleague brings to his teaching, not to mention his coaching and oversight of Lakeside Hall, as well as his level of comfort and natural ability in the classroom. Reliable, ever focused on the Blair community and centered around gratitude and service, Mr. Goggins is often the first to ask, how can I help? For this, as well as for the spirit he infuses into this work and this school, we are grateful. I am very pleased to present the 2016 APGAR Teaching Award to Timothy Goggins. annually recognizes a faculty member who has made significant contributions to residential life in the role of housemaster or dormitory faculty member. As a boarding school, Blair believes that equal to classroom and extracurricular education is the learning that occurs in the halls and dormitories of the school. The men and women who live in our dormitories teach and model the importance of values, responsibility, and respect. We are excited to be able to present this award to a couple this year. Since joining the Blair faculty in 2009, Mr. Ryerson has lived in Davies Hall, Freeman Hall, and currently making a home for his family with Mrs. Ryerson and Lock Hall. Mrs. Ryerson began her career at Blair in 2012 and together with Mr. Ryan, Mr. Ryerson helped run Freeman Hall and now returned to her roots of Lock Hall. Together, they have built upon the tradition set by those before them in making Lock Hall not just a dorm, but a home. They can be found out in the dorm at any given hour, serving cookies, walking Geiger, holding court on topics ranging from the solar system to the latest pop music artist, or most recently sharing the upcoming joys of the expanding family with the revealing party and cupcakes. Together, they work tirelessly to improve the quality of life for 70 plus girls in the campus at large. Their collective efforts and ideas for weekends have energized their weekend activities programs. We are delighted and fortunate to have such a dynamic and committed couple help shape the overall atmosphere of our campus. It is with great honor and respect that I present the Reether Residential Life Award to Mr. Michael and Mrs. Andy Ryerson with appreciation for all they do for Blair students. Vogel Teaching Prize. Originally given to the school as a teaching chair to be presented each year to that senior faculty member who reflects the fundamental commitment to excellence in classroom teaching, the Vogel Chair became the Vogel Prize in 1996 when the Mason Chair was given in Mr. Vogel's honor. 
The Vogel Prize celebrates those career educators whose devotion to teaching inspires young, t young people, as it is stated in the school motto, come, study, learn. This year we pause to celebrate an educator who is not only a superb teacher in her own right, but who has also served as an invaluable resource to and supporter of all Blair teachers. It is hard to describe the innate, absolutely genuine enthusiasm of today's recipient. She is passionate, curious, and ever positive. Moreover, her willingness to seize opportunity is unparalleled. Jump in to create a unit for a college, colleague's class? Sure. Teach English and then history? Absolutely. Coach JV soccer, girls soccer, and softball? Happy to. Yes, Mrs. Williams is as all in as we get as educators, and her love for Blair is deeply rooted in how and why and what we teach. It comes as no surprise then that her colleagues have described her as both a rock star and a superhero. Watch out, Avengers. With gratitude for her optimism and the enduring impact she has had on Blair students and teachers, I am very pleased to present the 2016 Vogel Teaching Prize to Ann Williams. longest-standing faculty award, and it acknowledges loyalty and service to Blair. This year, it's my distinct pleasure to award the Tedlow Prize to a faculty member who has given tirelessly to Blair throughout his 16-year tenure. He embodies the best of what we seek and need in the triple threat boarding school faculty member, masterful and approachful, approachable in the global issues in Western civilization classrooms, skilled and encouraging as a coach to our freshman boys basketball team and varsity boys golf and both supportive and enthusiastic as a surrogate parent on dorm duty for our freshmen and sophomore girls in Locke. He and his wife, Kate. Kate, I hope I haven't made you start crying yet. Not yet. All right. They are reassuring and dynamic fixtures on this campus, along with their two children, Lila and Ollie. One need only ask Andrew Sykes's colleagues or advisees and more what they admire and respect about him to receive what I know is a wealth of stories that exemplify the best of what Blair has to offer. With the many responsibilities that he deftly manages at Blair, it is his role as chair of the Rules and Discipline Committee that I highlight for a moment as a reflection of the deep commitment he has to our students and the good man that he is. When students appear before Rules and Discipline, it is often when they feel at their worst, their most defensive, their most vulnerable in this community. Mr. Sykes has exhibited a consistently deft and caring touch to help our students struggle with difficult moments in a way that teaches and connects humbles but never humiliates. For his work in the classroom, on the courts, and the course, and across this campus, it is my pleasure to award the Tedlow Prize to Andrew Sykes. tradition at Blair to recognize those seniors who will be serving our nation by attending one of our country's five service academies. At this time, I am pleased to present the appointment to the United States Air Force Academy to Cornelius Edmund Putnam. Marie Valenti, class of 2015, to the stage to present this year's appointments to the United States Naval Academy. These appointments are awarded to Caroline Grace Dooley.
finally to August Adriana Wilf. turn to the presentation of the Headmaster's Prize. The Headmaster's Prize is awarded to the student in the senior class who has conspicuously displayed loyalty to the school, outstanding leadership, a fine influence in sportsmanship, and Blair spirit in athletic competitions. It's been an honor getting to know the two recipients of this year's Headmaster's Prize over the last three years. Our first recipient inspires me with what I can best describe is her grace. Grace in the truest sense of the word. Kind, Filled with optimism, publicly selfless, incredibly hardworking, and service-minded, though never self-congratulatory. She exudes quiet confidence, patience, and results-oriented leadership that motivate all of us to be better and to do more, not only on this campus, but beyond. If there's any doubt about the impact she has on our campus, one need only listen to the recurring refrains of gratitude from her Lock Hall prefectees who have navigated their first years at Blair and have their feet more firmly planted on the ground because of her care or talk to her teammates on the track team, or to those whose perspectives are forever changed because they joined the trip she organized to St. Jude's Hospital in Tennessee. As for our second recipient, when anyone ever tells me that being like a headmaster feels like being like a mayor, I am reminded of the young man who for the last four years has, in my mind, been the real mayor of Blair, and has walked quite deftly in those shoes among his classmates. He is always present and has exceptional presence commands the squash court and the stage like very few can with the voice of a preacher, and the heart and soul of the gentleman and friend to his peers, to his teachers, and to this school. There are all kinds of ways to establish the measure of a great man, but none in my mind more central than character, determination, and most of all, goodness, and those he indeed has in abundant measure. That is why his prefectees, his friends, his faculty, and his headmaster love and admire him. It is my pleasure to award the Headmaster's Prize to Mackenzie Juliet Belton and William Jawan Pemberton. with the highest all-around achievement. I'll confess to thinking our recipient was pretty cool back when I first met her and she was still in fifth grade. She was then, as she is now, smart, funny, fun, spunky, and positive. She had a quiet confidence about her and an innate toughness, which may be attributed to growing up as the younger sister to three older brothers. It's really hard to identify exactly where our recipient has left her greatest mark on this school, for her impact is seen and felt nearly everywhere. Undoubtedly in the classroom where she has an insatiable appetite for learning, and certainly her contributions within the athletic arena as a two-sport athlete would merit. But how about in the way she has carried forward the tradition of Family Fun Day and reaching out to local families and welcoming them to our campus? Or maybe in all she has done for the senior class council and past class councils and for all of you. In my view, while all of that is impressive, she has given more of herself and impacted others most profoundly through her role as a Lock Hall prefect. Whether it's in capturing and freeing a terrifying mouse with her bare hands, or helping new girls adjust to life in a dorm of 70 girls, our recipient has given her heart and soul to the role. She cares so much for others, does the tough jobs without seeking any credit, and strikes the balance of seriousness and silliness that is so central to communities such as ours. A sense of fun absolutely permeates all that she does. One only needs to have visited Lock Hall during an impromptu dance party or gone on a late night McDonald's run with Shosh to know that. 
with gratitude not only for the work she has done for Blair, but for the leader, friend, confidant, and purveyor of joy she has been to so many of you. It gives me and the faculty great pleasure to award the Blair Academy Trophy for 2016 to Shoshana Geller. is awarded by the faculty each year, and the recipient serves as the class speaker. But what exactly does outstanding scholarship mean to our community? Given that today's recipient has been with us four years and taken in that time 26 courses, of which 17 have been at the honors or AP level, and received just one year grade below a 5.5 certainly tells part of the story. And let this be a cautionary tale to all of you. If you give a mathematician a mic, he will talk about numbers. But just as I am not only a mathematician, Kendall is not just the sum of some very impressive numbers. She is the catalyst for learning. For those who have had the pleasure of teaching Kendall during her time at Blair, myself included, it is clear that her scholarship extends beyond individual accomplishments. The same leadership she has provided as a prefect in Catherine and a member of the senior class council extends to our classrooms and her classmates. She has quietly played an essential role in shaping, supporting, and driving a community of learners to each be a better version of themselves. And when stress levels are high and work seems to pile up endlessly, her willingness to laugh and distinctive way of doing so can save us all from our doldrums. Kendall's enthusiasm for knowledge and willingness to help us help others reach similar levels of passion and understanding sets a model for all of us to follow. To that end, I hope you will now enthusiastically join me in learning from her one last time as her and your Blair careers come to a close. I am pleased to present to you the winner of the George P. Jenkins Class of 1932 prize and the class speaker for the class of 2016, Kendall Eileen Fitzgerald. In around 30 minutes, Blair will exist in the past tense for us. It will only be something to reminisce about. So what can we take away from it? What memories will stand out to us about Blair? I asked a few of you just yesterday to tell me. Alex said it was when she and Katie and Lenny got trapped in South by a snowstorm and had to run out just to Dale's to get some peanut butter to last them through the storm. Danny Keenan said it was hosting the late night Snapchat show with Kyle Davey. Ned immediately thought of the time Phil, Liana, Susan, Lena, I, and many more of our friends had a water balloon fight in paint war for Super Sunday. And Shade told me one of her favorite memories from junior year when she and her friends were bored in the can. So Taylor Hunt went and grabbed a speaker, and someone else grabbed a phone, and they had an impromptu dance party in the squash court. And then Miss Stone came in, who is the weekend duty master, and they thought she'd be angry, so they all ran and hid. But in fact, she thought it was awesome. It's one of her favorite memories, too. All of these great times happen without being organized. Blair has managed much of our lives, from our study habits to our sleeping habits. And this might seem like coddling at some times, but in actuality, this has prepared us for the next year. Because it's taught us how we truly want to spend our time. Understanding what structure is and then deciding how we personally want to break away from it, that's a habit we're going to need next year. Blair builds our desire to branch out from a system, and this is what we'll need to do. When I realized this, I began to think of a short story by Ian Forster that we read in our intellectual history class with Mr. Beck. The story is called The Machine Stops. Forster describes a mechanical world in which everyone lives in an armchair, in a pod, underground, with everything they would ever need at a touch of a button. The machine provides food and music and clothing. Every cell is identical. Every bed is the same. There's even FaceTime through a purple plate and virtual classes called lectures. 
In this world, Forster describes two characters, a mother and a son who have opposite takes on the machine. The mother, Vashti, takes comfort in the machine. She doesn't want to leave her pod. Forster writes, every day is the same. She made the room dark and slept. She awoke and made the room light. She ate and exchanged ideas with her friends. She listened to music and attended lectures. She made the room dark and slept. Above her, beneath her, around her, the machine hummed. I must confess, I'm a bit like Ashti. I'm comfortable here at Blair where everything is familiar and everything is accessible. I feel nervous for next year. I feel a little unprepared because everything is going to be so unfamiliar. But most of you guys are like Kuno. Her son, he lives in the opposite pod on the other side of the world. He was restless in his small room. Kuno told his mother of the machine, mother, men made it, remember that. Great men, but men. The machine is much, but it is not everything. I see something like you in this plate, but I do not see you. I hear something like you through this telephone, but I do not hear you. Restless as Kuno was, he decided to set out to find his way to the world above ground. He wanted to find the homeless, those who had broken away from the machine. Eventually, Kuno made his own way and found these homeless, as they're called, living on the surface, and he returned to tell his mother of his encounters. I have seen them, spoken to them, loved them. The way I see it, we are the new homeless, and we should be excited about that because it entails endless possibilities. We're breaking out of the structure we've known, and sure, we're going into another one, but we're going to have a lot more freedom. This is when we can figure out what we're truly capable of and what makes us happy. We've experienced just a touch of this at Blair through spontaneous things like a Snapchat show or an impromptu dance. And yes, those are products of living at Blair, but they shouldn't be and they're not just restricted to boarding school life. We mustn't be scared next year. We should try to be like Kuno. We have to open ourselves to new experiences because this is how we will meet people. We will learn about them and ourselves through practicing the uncomfortable, the spontaneous. People's ideals will take us to fascinating places with different perspectives, and appreciating and understanding these perspectives will reveal fascinating things about ourselves we would have never known. We've been told we don't need to know exactly what we want to do just yet, and that's true. We do need to start to figure out who we want to be. We know we can do anything, we can try everything in college, but we can't just be anyone, we can only be ourselves. Now we have the chance to really figure out who that person is, and what makes that person happy. Once we do this, we can set our goals according to who we are as individuals, and then pursue those goals no matter what any machine or any society says or thinks. The good thing about feeling prepared for college is that I know I'll be reaching out of my comfort zone a lot next year. And I'm excited to find out more about that girl. I hope she gives back for all that has been given to her. That she is a steward, after all. So for the next four years, we'll wander the surface, slowly separating ourselves from the different machines, and we'll meet more of the newly homeless like us. And just like at Blair, the greatest times will come when we see and speak to and love these people. Together, we can live outside of our comfort zone and try things that excite and scare us, things that force us to learn and meet and love. Instead of trying to find a home, let's make a home in the best versions of ourselves. Thank you, and congratulations.
Christopher Robert Baton. Shane Michael Brackham. Sela T. Britton. Jack Kai. Gregory Jackson Carney. Sing Ik Chang. Zayu Chang. Michael Joseph Sapola. Robert J. Clayton. Joseph T. Carell. Emily Sarah Court. Carissa Rose Curran. Brandon DJ Delavia. Kyle Alexander Davy. Caroline Grace Dooley. Alfred Dorber. Uechi Du. Trong Ha Zong. Jenna Marie Faust. Kendall Eileen Fitzgerald. Alexandra E. Friedman. Kara Marie Ganning. Zoe P. Garvey. Haley Lauren Gelberg. Shoshana M. Geller. Skyler Allison Elizabeth Grove. Bria Amani Henson. Philip Noah Ettinger. Matthew Harrison Holtzman. Paula Hong. Eugene I. Robertchuk. Joho Hyun. Michael Andrew Iacono. Felix Ingla Vives Fierro. <laughs> Emily M. Insana. <laughs> Catherine Mather Hicks. <laughs> Jaisha Faith Jacobs. Jeremet Jarasa Javinda. Sean Kang. Awesome. 
Zaina M. Karam. Eleni Kedros. Daniel Zev Keenan. Cameron N. Kurtz. John Thomas Lamon II. Aaliyah Oney Lang. Joshua, Joshua P. Lang, the land. Saviga Lee. Carly Aaliyah Lefkin. Christine Lok Ting Lung. Spencer C. Levy. Ejun Lim. Alexander Steven Litzenberger. <laughs> Nicholas DeBroca Lau. <laughs> Sophia Isabel Lobo. Yes, William Wyatt Long. Martha E. Loring. <laughs> Jessica Liu. <laughs> Kyle F. Malgen. <laughs> Joseph Mandel. <laughs> Eric Randall Marcus. Emma Abigail McCreek. Grace M. Middleton. Yasmin Mohammadi. Patrick G. Morrison. Catherine Elizabeth Nagel. Scott T. Neary. Justice Junkin Nickel. Sanafa Burgess Nudeu. Catherine Hannaway O'Connor. Daniel Patrick O'Reilly. Lillian Maya Oberstein. Sunwee Park. Sanjay K. Paul. <laughs> William Juwan Pemberton. <laughs> Kyle.
Kyle Phipps. William Maximo Pickett. Ava Laurel Prentice. Cody W. Pugh. Cornelius Edmund Putnam the third, yeah, Junior the third. Sorry about that. John Joseph Rauch. Michael James Rich, Jr. William S. Robinson. Henry Samuel Rosowski. Gil J. Rubio. A. Saban. <laughs> Benjamin Dowden Salander. <laughs> Devin J. Saylor. <laughs> Carly Lynn Seacamp. <laughs> Joshua J. Shaw. Karen She. Catherine T. Shook. Charles Edgar Sigety. Sarah Catherine Sigety. Alexander Thomas Smith. Henry P. Smith. Megan Elizabeth Stevens. Madison Lee Stiefel. James A. Stillerman. Keir Sun. Justin P. Swerble. Yes, sir. Catherine Ann Sykes. I didn't know until like so many. Lena Zagady Jess. Today, Shakira Tingman. <laughs> Carl Requeer Vandermeer. <laughs> Trevor Terrell Dan Wheat. Joshua Walker.
Lang Hua. <laughs> Olivia Murray West. August, Adriana Will. Morgan V. Williard. Michael Williams Wiper. Yishuan Young. Liana C. Zrancha.
So despite the rule being very clearly established that one was officially subject to elimination upon departing on Armstrong Hipkins that morning, I quickly got lost in various conversations with students as I approached the doors. And seeing a crowd of students seeming to be on their way, out of a headmasterly instinct, I proceeded to open and hold the door. Did anyone see Game of Thrones last Sunday? If you did, you might have a sense of what happened next and the price one pays ultimately for holding the door. For that's when I looked up and I saw Abby Bodner. Abby Bodner looking happy and earnest, seeming ready to take on the day. I believe I told her and the students around her, have a great rest of your morning. I stepped outside, out of the way to hold the door and to graciously let her pass. At which point, Abby Bodner, kind, sweet, loyal prefect Abby Bodner, reached out and slapped a red sticker right on my jacket and smiled. It's possible that not even second, seven seconds had elapsed since the start of the game. And I'm pretty sure never in the history of the game had someone been eliminated so quickly and so completely without mercy. Yes, sometimes things don't go according to plan, but sometimes it makes for a great story and a very funny memory. And trust me, Abby, now that a few months have gone by, and the shock is worn off, there is indeed an actual diploma in the envelope that I handed you today. <laughs> As you look ahead, my friends, with excitement and entirely normal anxieties about the unknowns that stand before you when you leave Blair, it can be very easy to get overwhelmed by the unexpected, by both the wonderful range of opportunities and options, but also the daunting challenges that don't and won't have easy answers for you. But you are ready to face them and embrace them and in those moments when you doubt, when you doubt that, when life seems too complicated or when you feel like you're forging your path entirely on your own, there's a few things I want you to remember. You're brave. You are brave. How do I know this? Well, I watched Yasmin humbly and beautifully tell her family's story and Sadie confidently own who she is and what she cares about during their respective chapels because I bore witness to Mackenzie channeling her passion for helping others even in the wake of personal loss so she could change the lives of peers and children at St. Jude's Hospital. Because I had the privilege of experiencing Emily knock it out of the park with a breakthrough performance with her incredible voice during Headmasters a few years ago and because I was able to marvel at how Jenna and Tiffany through sheer force of will, patience and limitless talent made acapella such a meaningful success. Because I watched Skylar show us what it means to be a world-class athlete and remind us there are no places, including the wrestling room, that girls cannot succeed. There, there are more stories like this than I can count and that your teachers and friends know about, and not just about some of you, but about each of you. You are brave, much braver than you believe, and you are strong. I know that to be true because I marvel that Josh, as he demonstrated exceptional and humbling mental fortitude, faith, and care for his team, even in the wake of a season-ending injury. Because I delighted, like those around me, in listening to Madison's quiet yet powerful voice, Phil Armstrong, during her senior speech. Because I'm so proud, Hannah, that you powered through and leaned on all the right people to get here today. And because I had the pleasure of seeing Max battle with every bit of energy he could muster and more heart than I thought possible in one young man when he won his match versus Sam and brought all of us to our feet. To watch so many of you grow more resilient, to learn how to gracefully accept disappointments and embrace that they indeed make us stronger and better versions of ourselves. To see you struggle and at times, yes, falter, but alas, make decisions that reflect who you are and what you care about even when those decisions are unpopular, or when they're hard, or when you thought no one was watching. All of that inspires me, it inspires all of us. So stay strong, and stay true to the principles that define who you are, even when it scares you, maybe especially when it scares you. Please keep asking yourself, what things matter most to me? What are the things for which I will stand? Do this often, and remember, no matter no matter what comes your way, you are so much stronger than you seem. And you're so smart. I don't mean just intelligent, although you assuredly are. But you're creative and insightful, intuitive and passionate in class, on the athletic fields, on stage. You are smart with people. You think and dream and ponder and generously share that with others. 
you are prefects like Shoshana, Kendall, Josh, Ned, Shade, Cameron, Emily, Max, Senna, Will, and so many others who modeled kindness and leadership through service and spent more late nights than you can count giving advice and listening to your prefectees so they could find their own voices. You are Yuichi, who blows us away with her brilliance, whether seated in the classroom or in front of a piano, including the one that now sits in my living room. Sorry, Yuichi. You are Mike Park, definitely, definitely commanding the stage in Armstrong, the Black Box, or the Evans Theater. It's going to be hard to imagine Blair plays without you. You are Sanjay and Ben, who, whether in skeptics in class or sitting in the West Common Room, ask questions and provide insights that elevate the level of intellectual discourse of all around them while making younger students feel better connected. You are each one who devoted nearly 300 hours of time to crafting an exceptional model ship in the makerspace. I could go on and on. When you arrive on your college campuses, we expect you to bring the confident humility that you often show us here. But in those moments of doubt, and everyone has them, you will have them too. When you wonder, did the college admissions office make some terrible mistake? Do not forget that you are each smarter, so much smarter than you think. My friends, the world needs you to be brave, strong, and smart. It needs you to carry the Blair bubble from this hilltop to the many places that you're going to go. The Blair bubble, the one that actually really matters, is not the one you will leave behind when you leave campus today. In fact, it's the one that you take with you. Inside it is the best of what you've experienced and what you've become. And it lives in the good work that you will do and in the people whose lives you will enter. So spread the bubble beyond this campus and go out and make the world more like the best of what you've experienced here. Finally, and most of all, I want you to remember this. You are loved. Life is ultimately about love. It's the reason we do what we do, why we strive to be successful and make a difference and do things that are important. It's why we push ourselves past limits, take risks and dare to share our stories. And you are indeed loved more than you will ever know by the people here today, by your parents, your relatives, your friends and faculty and your headmaster. Carry that with you in times of joy and hardship when life does not go according to plan. And in turn, share that love with others. I leave you today with a final charge that applies far beyond this school, on the hill, to all that you do in college, in your work, with your families, with your friends, and in your life. Be good to each other. Be good to each other. Because in this life, we are all good for each other. If you are smart, brave, strong, loving, and loved young people, and I cannot think of anything more worthy of our celebration today. Congratulations, Blair Academy Class of 2016. Thank you. transition moving from one stage of life to the next. Please allow me to close us today with a final word. God of many names, we are grateful for this time together. A time wherein diplomas have been conferred and a talented, adept, and special class of students turn their gaze from one landscape of life to the next. During the days, weeks, and months ahead, we ask that these students trust in what they've learned in this place. From their teachers, mentors, friends, from each other. To help them find their footing in an uncertain but promising future. And in this time of great joy and accomplishment, we ask on behalf of the class of 2016, the audacity to aspire toward what we know these students can achieve, the lives we know they have the potential to fulfill. Amen. So at this time, I invite James Jenkins, trustee and member of the 50th reunion class of 1966, who will present.
the class of 2016 flag to Yasemin Mohammadi, who will then lead our seniors out once faculty depart.